Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for Good News Radio today. We're so glad you're with us. Raylan, Thomas, and Stephanie are waiting to be picked up after a Christmas party at the library. Let's listen in and see where the conversation goes. Come on, where is she? Where's who, Raylan? My mom. I know she's busy getting everything ready for Christmas, but still, I have so much to get done today. Maybe she has something in the oven and needs to wait for it to come out before she can come and get you. Or she could be trying to finish wrapping some presents before you get home. Maybe she's trying to hide the presents so you don't see any of them. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe she's out buying presents. My mom always goes all out with presents at Christmas, so she's probably stuck in line at a store. Or just stuck in traffic. So, Thomas, where's your aunt? Doesn't she normally pick you up? Yeah, I'm not sure where she is. She wouldn't be at the store. She hates Christmas shopping. If she's doing something for Christmas, she'd be baking. Mmm. Aunt Sophie bakes the best cookies. And pies. And cakes. With Christmas coming up, she's been busy trying to make everything. She even lets me help. And the best part is, I get to lick the bowl afterwards. I'm too busy for cookies and cakes. I'm making presents for all my brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins. I make the best gifts. Well, I make the best cards. I always draw a picture of something each person likes on them. I haven't made cards, but I do the best decorating. I help my mom decorate the house. I also have a big part in the Christmas dance program this year. And you know, I have that solo in the Christmas recital coming up too. Yes, but I help decorate my church, and I've got a part in my church's Christmas musical. We do one every year, and it is a big deal. I get it. You're busy. But can a musical really take as much time as dance? Oh, it takes even more time than dance, I'm sure. Hi, guys. What's going on? Are your rides running late, too? Oh, hi, Stephanie. Yeah, they're late. We were talking about how many important things we have to do. I wish my mom would hurry up and get here already. Yeah, I wish Aunt Sophie would hurry up, too. I need to go over my part in my church's musical when I get home, and I'm already tired. You're tired? Well, I bet you're glad you don't have to practice a tiring dance number when you get home then, huh? Steph, can you help Raylan know that a musical is just as big of a deal as a stupid dance? It sounds like you both are really busy and have important things you are doing. Christmas time seems to keep a lot of people busy. Well, yeah. It wouldn't be Christmas without busyness and parties and church events. Or dance recitals. Or presents. Or Christmas cards. Or lots of yummy desserts. What are you doing this afternoon, Stephanie? I just found this book with some cool craft ideas. It has instructions for making a small candle holder. I'm going to work on that. A candle holder? What's that? It's a thing that holds candles, duh. We have those at my church. We use them during the Christmas Eve service. Here, Raylan. Let me show you what it's supposed to look like. Isn't it just perfect for Christmas? I guess. I mean, it's nice. It's just so simple. Wouldn't you want something fancier for Christmas? I mean, maybe if it was big and colorful and held a bunch of candles. Then you could put it in the middle of the table with all the desserts. Oh, I don't think it really matters that it's small and simple. The candle holder isn't the point anyway. It's just here to hold the candle. It's the light of the candle that's important. I mean, I guess. But we don't even use candles anymore except to make things look fancy. Now you just turn on a light switch and, boom, there's light. That's true, but candles can still be cool. One of my favorite things we do at Christmas is the candlelight service at my church. At the end of the service, everyone gets an unlit candle. Then they turn off all the lights and light just one candle. It's always cool how much light comes from just one candle. Then using the candle, they light more until everyone's candle has a light. Then we all sing a Christmas song together. It always makes my heart feel big, you know? Yeah, I feel that way sometimes too. So, when I saw this craft, I thought it'd be fun. I'm going to take the one I make to church this year. Of course, as much fun as making a candle holder can be, it would be useless without a candle to light. Candlelight reminds me of the true meaning of Christmas. How on earth can a little, simple candlelight remind you of Christmas? Christmas is one of the biggest things of the year. With some of the best desserts of the year. Well, for me, the light of the candle shining bright at Christmas reminds me of God's greatest gift for everyone. It reminds me of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Huh? Wait, Steph, you lost me. Why are you comparing Jesus to a candle? Just like you need light from candles, street lights, flashlights, or whatever to show you the way to go when it's dark, you need Jesus to be able to make your way to God. The Bible teaches that we can't come to God on our own because people are lost in the darkness of sin. That's why we need Jesus, 
who the Bible calls the light of the world. Jesus came to save us from the darkness of our sin. Oh, I know what sin is. My Sunday school teacher taught me that. Yeah, I've heard that word before. It's like stealing and murder, right? Well, yeah, th those are sins, but there's a whole lot more. Sin is anything that's wrong. It's not just murder, but also hating someone, being mean to your brother, disobeying your mom, disrespecting your teacher, or even having a bad attitude. Really? Even bad attitudes, huh? Well, then, I guess I've sinned a lot if even a bad attitude counts as sin. I'm not any different than other people. No one's perfect. Yeah, but just because other people sin, that doesn't make it okay. All sin is bad. And you're right, no one's perfect. I know I have. Yeah, I have too. But even something that just seems like a little sin is against God because God is perfect. It's kind of like the light again. Light is totally different than darkness, and God is totally different and apart from sin. So the bad things we do make our hearts dark with sin and separate us from God forever. But God loves us and didn't want us to have to be away from him forever. That's why Jesus came. Right, Jesus came from heaven to earth and was born as a baby. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. But he didn't stay a baby any more than you or I did. He grew up, but he never sinned, not once. And when he was an adult, he went around and taught people and did amazing things that showed he had the power of God. But after a few years of teaching and doing cool things, he was arrested and sentenced to die. Wait, I thought you said he didn't do anything wrong. You said he did cool things. Why was he arrested if he didn't do something to get in trouble? Good question. He didn't do anything wrong, but there were some people who really didn't like him. I don't know why. I think they were afraid of him, or they didn't like how he made them feel guilty for the bad things they did. Whatever the reason, they made up lies about him and used those lies to get him arrested. Even the governor guy, who was in charge of saying if Jesus would live or die, thought Jesus was innocent. But I guess he was afraid of the people who didn't like Jesus, so he let them have their way and kill Jesus. Wait, Jesus died? But I thought Jesus was super powerful. How could that be if he couldn't save himself from those people? Well, he could have saved himself, but he didn't. His dying wasn't just because of the people who didn't like him. He was choosing to let them kill him. Why would anyone choose to let someone kill them? Maybe he wasn't really that powerful. No, he was. He chose to let people make fun of him, beat him, hurt him, and nail him to a cross where he would die. He knew his dying on the cross was actually a part of God's big, awesome plan. So you are saying that Jesus let himself die because it was part of God's plan? Why would God plan for something so sad? Because of sin. Remember how I said even the smallest sin separates us from God? Well, all of us, even me and you, have done a lot more sins than just one small one. And all those sins create a huge separation between us and God. But God, and this still blows my mind when I think about it, God loves us more than you can even imagine. So he made a plan so we wouldn't have to be separated from him. And the only way something as big and bad as the darkness of sin could be gotten rid of was by someone who was totally perfect stepping in and taking the punishment for sin in our place. Someone totally perfect. Like Jesus. Exactly. Jesus let those people kill him because as he was dying, he was also taking the punishment for your sin and my sin and Thomas's sin onto himself. He died so you wouldn't have to be separated from God anymore. Wow, I didn't know that. But there's more to the story, right, Steph? Jesus didn't stay dead. He came alive again. We have a holiday to celebrate that, too. It's my second favorite holiday. Easter, there's almost as much awesome food for Easter, too, and lots of candy. That's right, Thomas. On the third day after Jesus died, he came back to life. Then, 40 days later, he went back to heaven where he is still alive today. God showed us just how great his love is when he sent Jesus to earth. And that great, awesome, amazing love is for you, Raylan. I never knew all of that. So even though I'm not perfect, God still loves me? Yes, and he created you to have a friendship with him. I have a friendship with him now because he has forgiven my sins. It's not like my friendship with you guys. God doesn't talk out loud to me, but in a way, it's better. God knows everything about me, and he still loves me. He is always there when I need him, and he helps me to do the right thing. And even though I still mess up and sin sometimes, God doesn't stop loving me. And there are even more awesome things about being friends with God that I'm still learning. This friendship is possible only because of Jesus. It's another thing that's like the candlelight. 
When I believed in Jesus, it was like a candle was lit in my heart. Instead of the darkness inside from sin, I now have light. But unlike a candle that anyone can blow out, God's light inside me will never go out. When I celebrate Christmas, I remember God's amazing love. And that love is for you too, Raylan, if you will accept it. God wants you to have a friendship with him and know and follow him. I want that too, but how can I have a friendship with God like that? You get that friendship by believing in Jesus. Do you want to do that right now? Yes, I do. But I'm still not sure what exactly I'm supposed to do. Do I need to go to church or something? Nope. You can believe right here and right now. If you are sorry for your sin and you really believe that Jesus died on the cross and came back to life and you trust him completely to forgive your sins and give you a friendship with God, then you are believing in Jesus. If you believe that, you can tell God about what you believe. Just talk to him like he's right there with you because he is. Okay, I haven't really prayed much before, but I do believe what you said about Jesus. So, um, here it goes, I guess. Um, hi God. This praying thing is new to me, but I just wanted to tell you that I believe Jesus took the punishment for my sins when he died on the cross for me. I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done. I want to live the right way. Help me obey you. Thanks for forgiving me, and thanks for having Jesus come. And, um, for Christmas. Um, amen. Uh, that was probably a weird-sounding prayer. No, not at all. Besides, it's not the words that are important, but what you believe in your heart. How did you learn so much about God anyway? I learned a lot from my mom. She even helps me when I have questions about what I read in the Bible. I learn a lot at church and Good News Club too. You should totally come to Good News Club when we start back up after Christmas. It's a lot of fun. We sing songs and play games and we learn about God. And we have snacks. That's my favorite part. Of course it is. Yeah, I think I'd really like that. Thanks. That's my aunt. I better go. It's super cool you believe in Jesus today, Raylan. And I hope your dance recital goes great. Thanks, and I know you're going to be awesome in that musical, too. Thanks. You should come. But right now, I really have to go. I hope Aunt Sophie brought some of her famous Christmas cookies for the ride home. Bye. Bye. Bye, Thomas. I think I see my mom's car, too. You know, Steph, I'm actually glad my mom was late. Thanks for telling me about Jesus. And when you're done with that book... Maybe I'll check it out and make a candle holder of my own to help me remember how Jesus brought light to me, too. That sounds like a good plan. Bye, Raylan. Wow, Raylan made an important decision today, didn't she? She believed in Jesus as her savior from sin. This decision isn't just for her. Each of us have to decide what we will do with Jesus. Do you know you have done wrong things that separate you from God? Do you know that Jesus died and came alive again for you? Will you believe in Jesus as your savior and friend today? If the answer is yes, tell God about it. You could say something like this. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I know I have done wrong things that separate me from you, and I'm sorry for them. I don't want to be separated from you anymore. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and came back to life so my sins could be forgiven. Help me to have a friendship with you and learn to live your way. Thank you. Amen. If you believed in Jesus today, or even if you believed in him before, God wants you to grow to know him and his ways more and more. Do you remember some of the ways Stephanie said she gets to know God more? She read her Bible, talked to her mom who believes in Jesus, and went to church and Good News Club. These are all great ways for you to get to know God more too. You can ask a parent or other adult you trust to help you do some of these things too. Well, I have to go do some last-minute shopping of my own for a Christmas party tomorrow. I hope your Christmas is a fun one. Join us next time for more Good News Radio.